Today we are going to talk about how to connect your floating tree to your main tree on Ancestry. And if you're not familiar with what a floating tree is, I'm going to explain that too. So we're going to jump into that here in just a moment. But if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. If you find value in these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Subscribing is very important to help me grow the channel. So I do appreciate it. All right, let's jump into it. So the first thing you may be asking yourself is what is a floating tree if you're not familiar with it. So a floating tree or a floating ancestor is someone who is standing alone in your main tree on ancestry you cannot do this on family search because it's one world collaborative tree but in this case uh chris teepner here was actually a friend of my ancestor and i wanted to keep him as a floater in my tree because he had a very integral part of my ancestor's life and he's found in records and in newspaper articles where they were together in various events they ended up doing business deals together. So it was important for me to, to trace Chris Tegner as well. And uh, so I have him and his wife and his son floating all by themselves in my main tree. So there's, a, there's several things you need to understand here. How you create a floater in your tree. We're gonna talk about that. And how we can make links to go back and forth to your main tree, to the floater. And eventually, if you figure out that, say this is a DNA match, or this is a uh, another ancestor you suspect is related, you know, right place, right time, same surname, something like that, but you cannot figure out how they're, how they're related to you, you can create them as a floater in your tree and then you can, when you figure it out, you can connect them later. And so I'm gonna show you how to do all of that right now. So before I get into how to create a floater, how to do all those links and everything, I want to show you how to get oriented. Because as you saw a moment ago, I had Chris Tegner floating all by himself. He is in this tree but he's not connected, he's floating in space. And no matter how far back you zoom out, you're not gonna find him. Your only way you can find him is to search by, and I just usually search by his last name. But what if you forgot? We're gonna go into all that, like who, who is in your tree as floaters? There's a lot of little tricks we're gonna show you. Some of them came from you, the viewers, as to how to keep track of these floaters. But one of the things I advise you to do is to make yourself the home person because whenever you're, let me show you, let me demonstrate. So we go to Chris Tegner and he's out here by himself. Now I'm lost, right? Where's my tree? How do I find myself? Now you could follow the path down here if the path is recorded. In a lot of cases, it's not. If you have yourself as the home person, you can just hit this little home button and it'll take you back to yourself in the main tree. So what we're gonna talk about now is a little bit about how to create a floater in the first place, and then we'll get into the whole how to connect and all that. But um, for those of you who have never seen a floating tree or a floating ancestor, we're gonna do that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my second great-grandmother, Christiane Beck, and an immigration record where there are some people listed on that immigration record that I wasn't sure about when I first looked at it. And so I wanted to create a floating tree or floating persons in my tree so that I could later connect them if needed. So just for some context, Chrissy Ann Beck uh, first married a guy named Carl Schroeder, and then he dies in 1878. And then she marries a year later, Anchor Jensen. So now that you have that information, let's go look at this record real quick to give you some context. So here is Christiane Jensen immigrating to the United States in 1882. And with her, she has several children. She's got someone named Elizabeth Herman Francis Wilhelm C., who is a nine-year-old boy. This is the one that we're going to create a floating tree for because we don't really know who these people are. So we're gonna just use him as an example and in case you wanna see the transcript of that, here's Wilhelm. It says 
Jusen, but it's actually Jensen. Long story short, we're going to create a floating tree for Wilhelm. He's nine years old and he is listed as a Jensen here. So to create a floating person, we don't really know how they're connected. It could be that Wilhelm is a child of Christiane, but we don't know that for sure. So what we're going to do, it really doesn't matter who in the tree you connect a person to because we're going to immediately disconnect them. So we're going to add a son just for the sake of ease because it'll mark him as a male. He is not a Schroeder. He is a Jensen and his name is Wilhelm. And because he is nine years old, we're going to estimate, right? It says here he's nine years old, a male. Right? So we're going to estimate his birth date to be an approximate birth year of 1873. So we're going to say 1873. We're going to say about 1873. And we're going to pick uh, the drop down that Ancestry gave us because they want us to use those acronyms. Now it says here Christian Beck and Carl Schroeder. That's fine. What we're going to do is disconnect them anyway. So it really doesn't matter who we connect to. So now we need to drill into his profile. So we click there and now we're in Wilhelm Jensen's profile. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit edit, edit relationships. And now we're going to disconnect the parents just by clicking the X. Yes, we're going to remove. Yes, we're going to remove. And before we go away, we want to grab this URL right here. So I'm going to control C to copy. And the reason why we're doing that is because what we're going to do is we're going to put a hyperlink to Christiane Beck's profile because we now disconnected her. He is no longer a son of Christiane Beck. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a web link to and from her. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back over here so that I can get back to Christiane Beck. Now that I'm back on Christiane Beck's profile, I've got her in one tab and I've got Wilhelm in another tab. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got... I've got Wilhelm's uh, URL copied. I'm going to go over to Christiane Beck. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to add a web link. I'm going to paste that web link in there. And I'm going to say this is Wilhelm and hit add. And I could even put more descriptive information. Potential son, uh, possible DNA match, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So you could actually put more information. See here I put one for a marriage to Lawrence Jensen. So that's probably a record. It looks like it's on the Danish website. All right. So now we've got him here and we can just click on that and it takes us right to his profile. Okay. So now I've actually got it open twice. I'm going to go over to Christiane Beck's profile. I'm going to grab her control C, grab her URL. I'm going to go to Wilhelm and I'm going to add a web link here. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to say Christiane Beck, possible mother and hit add. And now this link, I can just click bing bang back and forth. And every time I click this, it's going to open in a new tab. So you can see I've got them both open twice. I'm going to close those out because I don't need them both open twice. All right. So that's the basics on how you can create a floater, right? You, you, you attach it to anybody you want. It really doesn't matter because you're going to immediately go into edit, edit relationships and remove that relationship. Just remember whoever that new person is that you added, you need to then go into their profile before you hit edit, edit relationships. I accidentally do that all the time going the wrong way. All right. So then by having the hyperlink down here, you can then quickly get to that floater. Now, the only other way that you can get to the floater, if you forgot to do the web link, is to do a tree search. And so if we type Wilhelm, here he is right here. So if you don't use that web link, you have that option. I want to show you one more thing. This is, uh, several viewers uh, have told me that they are using this as a trick. So if you go up here to the tree tags in Ancestry and you create a custom tree tag, you can create one called floating tree. So if we, and if you're not sure how to do that, just hit this custom tree tag button and you can name it whatever you want. You can give it a description. Okay. I'm going to cancel that because I've already got one and you can click uh, floating tree. Now here's the cool part about doing that. So if you are in your tree, and you are just lost. Let's just say you're like, 
oh, I can't remember who my floaters are, you can then click on the My Tree Tags and go find them. So how you would do that is you would go to Tree Search and then hit these filters and then go to the custom tags and go Floating Trees and hit Done. And it's going to list everybody that you have floating in your tree. In this case, I've only got two because I've connected everybody. But, you know, I've got a couple people here listed. And now you've got everybody in a nice, neat list as to who your floaters are. So I have the viewers to thank for that tip because I hadn't really thought of that before. And so your comments matter. So if you have tips, please put them in the comments because that, uh, that helps everybody who are reading the comments. And sometimes I'm able to share that information. Okay, so let's say for a moment that now we want to connect Wilhelm. We find some evidence that says that Wilhelm is, in fact, a child of Christiane Beck. Remember, Christiane Beck right here, her second husband is Anchor Jensen. And that we discover that Wilhelm is actually by her first husband, Carl Schroeder. And so we want to connect this floating person into our tree and make Christiane Beck the biological mother. Now Wilhelm gets the Jensen name after the marriage of Christiane Beck to Anchor Jensen. I know this is complicated, but the, the children of Schroeder end up getting the adopted name of Jensen during the whole process of uh, migrating to the United States. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Wilhelm and we're going to add a mother. And this is how you connect a floater to the tree. So you add this person. You don't add the mother as a new person. You add as someone selected from the tree. So in this case, we're going to type Christiane back until she pops up. There she is. And now, because she's already someone in my tree, it's going to connect Wilhelm to her, but not to Anchor Jensen, because that is not the biological father. Now, we can go and add him as a stepfather, but for now, we're just going to add the mother as Christiane Beck. And now, even though this was a web link, she's listed here as the mother. Okay, we can add a father, or we could add it here either way. We could add the father as Schroeder. So again, here, we're going to add the biological father as someone already in the tree. So let me see if I can type this, even though it's Danish characters. There it is, Carl Frederick Heinrich Julius Schroeder. What a name. Okay, so then we get save. And that is the father, even though he's listed as Jensen. Now, later on, I would want to go back and prove that he was baptized originally in Denmark as Schroeder, which I did, and he is actually a Schroeder. And so I would change his name to Schroeder because I always put their names in as their birth names, okay? Okay, so if we want to add Jensen as the alternate father, he's actually a stepfather, we can't really do it from here. Ancestry doesn't give us another option here, but what we can do is we can go up to Edit, Edit Relationships, and add an alternate father here, and we can type Jensen. And there's Anchor. He is the stepfather. Then hit save. And now we can change the relationship to step. Okay. And then we hit OK. And now we have uh, alternate relationships here as, as a stepfather to Wilhelm. So now what we've done is we have connected our floater to our main tree. Now, if we look at Christiane Beck's profile again, we see Wilhelm down here listed as a child of uh, Frederick Schroeder. Well, he is listed here, but he's actually a stepchild. Okay, so that can be confusing. So you got to be careful because he is listed as a stepchild here as well. Now, uh, this was all for demonstration purposes, okay? Full disclosure, Wilhelm is not a real person in this case because this Carl Wilhelm Schroeder is in fact the same guy. So now I've realized, okay, wait a minute. I've done all this work. I created a floater because I wasn't sure. And 
now I realize that after looking at more documents, I've discovered that this Carl Wilhelm Schroeder is the same guy. Their birth years are really close. And remember, this was an estimated birth year. We find documentation later that this Carl Wilhelm is this Wilhelm. So now what do we do? We can merge with duplicate these two people. Okay, so how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one. It really doesn't matter. And I am going to go up here and I'm going to say merge with duplicate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find someone in my tree. And this is going to be Carl Wilhelm. And there he is. And I'm going to compare the information. And I'm going to go, yep, yeah, that's good. I want to keep this information. I want to keep this information and not this information. You can also compare it if you wish. And then we hit merge and they become one. Okay, so now we're in Carl Wilhelm Heinrich Schroeder's profile. And when we merged them, it did bring over that Anchor Jensen was the stepfather. So that is awesome, okay? It also brought in the URL links, the hyperlinks to Christiane Beck. I don't need this anymore because she is listed right here. So I'm gonna edit that and I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna go over to hers. And I'm going to do the same thing because I know there's a web link here at the bottom where it says Wilhelm Jensen. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to delete that uh, URL as well. And so that, long story short, how you can connect floaters to your main tree. And in this case, when I hit the home button, it brings me back to my full tree and, you know, I can continue on with my research on this family. I hope that was helpful, it gave you information on what a floater is, how to connect them to your tree, how to uh, create tree tags to help find all of the floaters in your tree really fast, uh, how to connect, disconnect, edit those relationships. All of that was very helpful. There is a handout for this episode if you want all of those step-by-step -step instructions. They're in all the usual places. You can find it at genealogytv.org in the handout section. Uh, for individual purchase. If you are a member, either on Patreon or on the YouTube channel, uh, you would get the handout. If you are on the YouTube channel, you have to be at the Information Access Level channel membership. If you're on Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash genealogy TV, you would need to be at the Happy Dance level. Uh, over on Patreon, those get emailed to you each time we upload an episode. And so uh, with that, you can find on either membership, you can go through the posts and find the past episodes or the current one. And so uh, I hope that was helpful. Please make sure you're subscribed because boy, that really helps me uh, continue to do what I'm doing here uh, on the channel and helps me bring more. And it really is free to just subscribe. So hit the subscribe button, ring the bell if you want to get notified when those new episodes are uploading. And please, if you found value in this, hit the like button. That really does help. And if you have tips, leave them in the comment section. Those really, really do help. Uh, as you saw here today, I shared one of those tips about the tree tags and using a floating tree tag to help uh, organize and find your floaters in the tree. So all of that, great tips for you, I hope. And so with that, we'll see you in the next episode. There are more videos on the screen for your binge watching pleasure. We'll catch you in the next one.